in a barren desert. Spirit water bringing life to dusty earth. God is trickling through our lives as in a dream unfolding, promising revival and rebirth like a healing stream. A gentle rain on a thirsty garden, spirit water come to nourish tiny seed. God is bubbling through the soil to coax a new creation, yearning for an end to want and need, like a gentle rain. Like a river strong with a restless current, spirit water rushing on to distant shore. God is carving out a channel in a new direction, calling for an end to hate and woe. Like a river strong. Far horizons, spirit water in the love, both deep and wide. God is working in our hearts to shape a new tomorrow. God will always challenge and provide, like a mighty sea, like a river strong, like a gentle rain. Outside the lines, exploring paths that few could ever find, and it takes me into places where I've never been before, and opens doors to worlds outside the lines. My Lord, colors outside the lines. blessings of water and wine, and it takes me into places where I've never been before, and opens doors to worlds outside the line, and we'll never walk on water if we're not prepared to drown, body and soul need a soul from time to time, and we'll never move the gravestones if we're not prepared to die and realize there are worlds outside the lines. My soul lost the color outside the lines. Tear back the curtains, sun come in and shine. Outside the lines, and we'll never walk on water if we're not prepared to drown. Body and soul need a soaking from time to time, and we'll never move the gravestones if we're not. I've never been before. 
we're not prepared to drown body and soul need a soaking from time to time and we'll never move a gravestone if we're not prepared to die and realize there are worlds outside the Good morning, everyone. Grace and peace to you in Jesus' name. And welcome back to this next decision session of the 44th General Council of the United Church of Canada. Uh, we have done a lot over the last uh, couple of days, and we still have a lot to do over the next couple of days. Uh, there are a number of things that uh, I've been asked to bring uh, to you, um, and also uh, just getting us right into the beginning of our day. But there are a few things that we'd really like to just kind of bring people into. Uh, the, the first is that I just wanted to remind everyone, and I'm going to take a page out of the prayer book of a, of a, of a religious community that some of us here in the United Church are connected to, Unvirtuous Abbey. Uh, and uh, Unvirtuous Abbey uh, has in their prayer book uh, this prayer that I think is uh, appropriate for today. Whoa, oh, we're halfway there. Whoa, oh, living on a prayer. Take my hand, we'll make it, I swear. Whoa, oh, living on a prayer. Uh, and I believe that was written by the, um, uh, the blessed Bon Jovi or someone like that. Okay, I am being kind of silly, but I am feeling also a little bit uh, punchy here at the moment. Uh, the reality is that we are halfway through our decision-making sessions. And I am really glad for the work that we've been able to do to this point. And I am hopeful about the work that we're able to do in the time that is to come. There were a few things that have come to me um, uh, from various places that I've been asked to respond to. Uh, the first thing that's really important is that could you please make sure on Zoom that you have your first name and your last name together there? Uh, especially if you're like Richard's iPad or things like that. iPad is a great name, but we're kind of sharing it across a lot of people right now. So if we could please have first name, last name, that will just help our, uh, our uh, um, equity team who are helping with the speakers list. One of the other things that came was a desire to have in our voting process uh, a vote that, that says yes, no, abstain. And I just want to remind you, as I did uh, at, closer to the beginning of our, of our general council meeting, within the parliamentary procedure that we use, we don't have an abstention. So the idea is, is that we actually literally abstain when we make the choice not to vote, that that is an abstention. I mean, it comes from the word abstain, right? But the thing is, if you would like to have your abstention recorded, then what we would ask you to do is write an email to info at generalcouncil44.ca. Can I just double check? Oh, yeah, okay, I got that right. Info at generalcouncil44.ca. And what you're gonna need to do is just put in the subject line, record abstention, and then in the body of the text, your name, and which vote it want, you wanted to have your abstention recorded on. So uh, we don't have the ability to, to have a, a, an abstention on a ballot. This is the way that you record an abstention if you wish to abstain from a vote. There has also been a, a need um, from me with the way that my, my uh, brain is kind of working at the moment. Um, we are, would like to ask, please, that if you wish to raise a point of privilege or a point of order, 
We're going to ask you to go to our parliamentarian first to check to make sure that it is a point of order or a point of privilege. Uh, to do that, please email, uh, and I'm going to make it bigger on my screen so I can see it here, Cheryl Ann Stadelbauer Sampa, and that would be C Sampa, C S A M P A at united church.ca. C S A M P A at united church.ca. Cheryl Ann will be watching her email and we'll be in contact with you either by email or if you need to by telephone um, so that we can have that conversation as needed. Um, but we need to do this to make sure that what's coming to the moderator um, is actually within the bounds of point of order or point of personal privilege. So if you have a point of order or personal privilege, please first email csampa at united-church.ca. The final thing that I, uh, well, almost the final thing that I have, um, we know that people are joining general counsel from a variety of places, from their church offices, from, um, <laughs> excuse me, from their homes. But we've also noticed that there have been people in their vehicles, and we've noticed that there have been people who are driving. Folks, please, please, please. Um, I, you know, I, I love listening to podcasts. I love listening to meetings when I'm driving. But if you're going to participate in talking, we would ask you please to pull over. It becomes really, really important that your safety is paramount in this. So we would ask that, that uh, if you are going to talk um, or, or, or make presentations, we would ask please that you pull over to, to have that conversation just for your safety and and uh, uh, for us as a community to, to know that you are safe. In that. And finally, just before we move on to a test vote, uh, a reminder uh, of our desire to hold all of God's children, uh, especially those of you who are gathered here uh, in God's love in all of this. And part of the way that we do that is, the, is, is through our holy manners, is through our work to respect and love each other and to support each other in the in the uh, in the sharing that needs to happen in these decision making times and so we just would ask uh, ourselves to be able to to hold together in all of that today we uh, need to as we have started off each of our days with a test vote of our simply voting now before you go to simply voting I need to ask, please, that for this test vote, that every commissioner who has the ability to vote, okay, so every commissioner, all of us who have the ability to vote, if you could please do this vote, it's really important that, that I get some calibration here just to make sure that what's happening. So could you please make sure that you vote on this test vote? And to vote on this test vote, you need to go to feed loop. And when you go to feed loop, you're going to click in the menu bar on the left-hand side, voting. Can I ask that the uh, test three be open, test three ballot be open, please? If you don't see it in front of you, refresh your screen. And your choice is yes or no to the question, I live in a rural community. Now you get to define what rural means to you on this question but I live in a rural community. If you feel you do, please click yes. If you feel you don't, please click no. Then click continue. Once you've clicked continue, if you would like to confirm your ballot, simply click confirm. If you realize all of a sudden, well, no, it's not really a rural community. It's more of suburban rural. So I'd actually like to say no. You can go back with change, click no and then click continue, and then confirm your ballot. So I'd ask you to vote now, please. And again, we're asking that everyone who has the ability to vote, please vote in this ballot. And I'm going to leave this open for one minute.
another 20 seconds. I'd ask please that the ballot now be closed. And of those who responded, uh, about 54% do not live in rural communities and about 46% do live in rural communities. So thank you very much for participating in that test ballot. We're gonna continue now uh, bringing ourselves into this time of, of uh, uh, decision-making with hearing again the scripture that we have been sharing in over the last six months. So let's listen together. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? And Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Marko chapter 8, Pavesia 27, Kushika 30. Jeso, na wadidzi wake, waka furira kumesha ya kapotere za kesari ya Filipi. Wari munzira, aka wabvunza achiti. Wanu, wano tindini aniko. Waka pindura wakati, wangwe, wano tijoani mbaba tizi. Wangwe, wano ti eria, wangwe je, wano ti mbongwe. Wawa porofita. Iye akati, asi imi, munoti kudini. Munoti ndini aniko. Petro aga pindra akati, ndimi kristu. Jeso aga wayambira, kutiwasa uza munu nishaki. Mwari wakumburele kwenye wakwishukurao, nekuti ichene. One of the exciting things that happens at every general council is that we don't do this work by ourselves. The commissioners don't just sit in a room by ourselves. We have the ability to be connected during the general council in a way that we are also connected throughout every other day of our lives with global ecumenical and interfaith partners. We have global ecumenical and interfaith partners who are guests and participate in this general council. 30 global ecumenical and interfaith partners have accompanied the 44th general council. Each individual represents a particular face of United Church ministry. And this representation is part of our identity. We need our partners' perspectives as we make important decisions about the future life and work of the church. Their presence and participation is a reaffirmation of the United Church's commitment to partnership with others in God's mission. That historic commitment was reiterated at the 37th General Council in the document Mending the World, that we do separately only what we cannot do with others. So we're going to hear from three of our partner guests today. Uh, we're going to hear from the Reverend Terry Hord Owens the general minister and president of our full communion partner, the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in the United States and Canada. And then uh, the Reverend Stephen Kendall, the immediate past principal clerk of the Presbyterian Church in Canada. And then Horacio Mensones, executive director of CREAS, the regional ecumenical center for advice and service based in Argentina. Horacio is also a member of the United Church's Partner Council. And so I would turn to the Reverend Terry Hort Owens for her reflections. 
Thank you so much, Richard. It has been a gift um, to be with you during this 44th General Council. On behalf of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the U.S. and Canada, uh, we are grateful for our ecumenical partnership and full communion partnership with you. Uh, we have churches both in the United States and Canada, so we're a binational church, and we work really hard to better understand the Canadian context of so many disciples. Beyond the theme, who do you say that I am? I have been struck by the way in which uh, the United Church has labored to learn, to listen, to discuss, and to decide. Your learning sessions, the opportunity to ask clarifying questions, the opportunity to simply listen and learn, and then to engage in discussion groups, and finally to make decisions models for our church an important way of deep thinking, collaborative understanding, and ultimately an expression of the unity of the church that allows us to make decisions together even when we don't agree on everything. And so I'm grateful for this example that you have set for the ways in which uh, spiritual practice have bathed all of these sessions in worship and prayer for the ways in which you have continued to lift up the Lordship of Jesus Christ as our um, focal point. We are all followers of Jesus. We serve and understand in different ways around the world. But as disciples of Christ have historically understood, unity is our polar star, not unanimity, but the understanding that we all work together, uh, regardless of whether we agree on every little thing, that our collaboration is the powerful witness that we can make and the way that we can answer that question, who do you say that I am? Disciples claim in our intro to our design, our governing document, we confess that Jesus is the Christ, the son of the living God, and proclaim him Lord and Savior of the world. Thank you for walking with us as we continue to walk with you and pray with you. God bless you, Richard, as you end your term, and many blessings to our dear brother, the Reverend Michael Blair, uh, who is a, himself a, a prophetic ecumenical witness on behalf of the United Church. God bless you all, and thank you for this opportunity to express my profound gratitude uh, and continued blessings and partnership from the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Greetings. My name is Stephen Kendall. I'm with the Presbyterian Church in Canada and very pleased to be a Canadian partner guest at the General Council this year. First, I'd like to acknowledge the elders who have uh, been accompanying the General Council and offering such inspiring wisdom and meaningful prayers. It's good and quite moving to hear Indigenous languages spoken throughout the General Council. I'm very glad to be in that presence. The United Church of Canada and the Presbyterian Church of Canada are good friends and colleagues together in ministry. We can always call on the United Church of Canada for advice and support and partnership and know that we'll receive a warm and enthusiastic welcome that's grounded in the integrity of your church. Our ecumenical connections through the Canadian Council of Churches, World Communion of Reformed Churches, uh, World Council of Churches, uh, really show that we are on an ecumenical journey together and your members are so committed to the ecumenical journey and such good representatives of the church in all these ecumenical fora. This friendship between our denominations is important, especially at special times in our lives. It was very important during the journey of healing and reconciliation and the development of the uh, Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement and the ongoing work uh, at the all-party table. It's also important, uh, last year we made decisions to embrace the inclusion of LGBTQI persons in all facets of the life and ministry of the church, including permitting same-sex marriage. Uh, this year, our renewed commitments to become an anti-racist church resonate with your similar commitments. And so we are really glad to draw on your experience and to, and to share ours as well. I've been interested to witness the General Council itself, especially the marathon model that uh, is being used. And I look forward to sharing learnings with uh, our, our leadership. We in the Presbyterian Church have taken 
a kind of a sprint approach to our General Assembly, and while I'm not sure we would do the same marathon, I think a more leisurely stroll would be in order for us. I've been also glad to uh, be asked to co-host a discussion group with Sarah Waldy, a youth commissioner. We have been honored to have with us uh, guest of the General Council, Richard Marceau of the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. And uh, what a wonderful group to be a part of. Um, this is where the part of the marathon really shines. We have had lots of time to speak together and more than that, to listen to one another, to have moments of grace and hope together. This has been born out of the goodwill of a diverse group of people willing to speak openly and honestly, sometimes strongly, but always respectfully, and even be willing to have minds changed as a result of greater understanding. So thank you, discussion group number nine, and uh, especially to Richard for what you've brought to us. Once again, thank you for the invitation to be with you, and may God bless you, all our friends in the United Church of Canada. So hello, um, God bless everyone and each one of you. I'm bringing the greetings to the General Council of the UCC from CREAS, as well as my appreciation for the opportunity to participate in the General Council and also for the opportunity to be one of the co-hosts in uh, one of the discussion groups together with Reverend Wanda Stride. Uh, from CREAS, we congratulate the UCC for its commitment to partnership and cooperation from its communities of faith, its local and national leaders and structures, and a commitment that has been reaffirmed by in the United Church um, new strategic plan, as well as in the conversation that you have had these days in, in your sessions. Your voices and your hands united with other churches and organizations help in building a stronger testimony for a plentiful life in a world where many are suffering. And um, in this afternoon, I wanted to share um, two very short stories uh, that um, have to do with uh, the importance and the, uh, the relevance of uh, ecumenical cooperation and partnership. Uh, in the year 2000, 2020, our uh, activities and our programs got almost stopped because of the pandemic and also the context changed uh, because of the, uh, the pandemic and the consequences of the, of the pandemic, uh, meaning uh, economic disparities, economic injustice, social um, isolation, health, mental health problems. And in this uh, context, uh, CREAS was inspired by a document that was launched by the World Council of Churches and the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue called Serving a Wounded World in Interreligious Solidarity, which inspired us together with the United Church of Canada and with other churches and ecumenical partners to launch a laboratory of ecumenical and interreligious practices, best practices, to bring people together for dialogue, encounter, communion, in order to think of and bring practical solutions with an impact in their local communities in terms of justice, human dignity, peace, sustainable development, care for the creation. Second story, in uh, 2021, Due to the um, well, long-term uh, armed conflict in Colombia and also due to the protests, protests in uh, 2019 and 20, many community leaders and church leaders had been threatened and even killed. So the uh, inter-church dialogue for peace, that's called DIPAS, called their international partner churches and ecumenical organizations to bring the voices from their leaders in the communities in, in the regional and global scenario. So that was another, um, another place where CREAS and the United Church of Canada met to, uh, to communicate, to show the situation of the leaders in Colombia to the world. Recently, we have also met 
not this time uh, to to bring the or to show the bad news, but to show to celebrate the good news of the new hope of the people in Colombia, but also to support the efforts for reconciliation in the communities and to make the government and powers accountable and responsible for uh, bringing human dignity to the local communities. And I'm bringing this uh, to these two stories because I do believe that ecumenical cooperation and ecumenical partnership do make a difference in this context that we are living. First, we uh, identify, share, exchange, and, and knowledge, uh, sorry, and, and challenge the knowledge of uh, the context and the impact of the pandemic and economic injustice, climate change, violence in the communities. But also we exchange and mobilize knowledge for local solutions that come from the diaconial work of the churches and the work of the uh, grassroots organizations. Second, we provide a space for hospitality, meeting, encounter community in a continent, and, and I would say that in a world that is living in a greater um, polarization and where fundamentalism is growing. So partnership and uh, ecumenical help us to promote dialogue and walk in this path of uh, unity of the church. Third, we equip the new generation, a new generation for a new ecumenism open to dialogues of all expressions of faith, all traditions and all religions in order to, um, to bring peace, justice to the world. And last, ecumenical dialogue, ecumenical partnership and ecumenical, and ecumenical cooperation speak the truth to power. In Latin America, where growing this content, this content is growing uh, with governments and political positions, and there are also political uh, positions against democracy and human rights growing. We express this uh, to the to the world and to the church, our commitment to human dignity, to peace, to justice, to a, a healthy environment. So in this complex times, God is calling his church to build and share integral responses together with those who are suffering. Connecting our understanding of context, joint discernment, being capable of an ethical indignation, building communities, serving our wounded worlds, working now for the ecumenical movement of the future, and raising our prophetic voices together is part of our answer to the call of God to us today. So, moderator, thank you very much. Thanks for, for the opportunity uh, of being part of the General Council, and God bless you in your decision-making sessions in the coming days. Gracio, uh, uh, Stephen and Terry, Thank you very much for being part of this general council with us and not only you, but all of our global and ecumenical and interfaith guests. Those voices have helped us and continue to help us to, to be in good partnership and to learn and to change. So thank you so much for, for your presence with us. God bless you. just need to change gears a little bit here. Friends, at the end of yesterday's second session, a point of order was raised by Paul Douglas Walpole. Uh, at, as a point of order must be responded to before the business of the council can continue. I'm offering my ruling now. Paul's point asked if it is in order for the business table to have prepared proposals for consideration when the agreed upon process in GS01 said that the facilitation team would do so. My ruling is that the practice is in order. In each proposal, the facilitation team has done its work as laid out in GS01. 
it has proposed a way forward for the council. The business table in its administrative responsibility to help the council to get its work done has offered wording that is consistent both with the facilitation team's proposed way forward and with the action language of motions. The pre-decision making process that we've been using hopefully gives the space for the council to change any wording that it feels is not consistent. Before that wording is officially moved and seconded, becomes a matter of record, and ultimately is put to a vote. And I believe that process has worked. There have been changes to wordings to make them consistent. And in one case, I asked that a clause be set aside for consideration in a different fashion because of the concerns I was hearing from the facilitation team and the council. From the beginning, the business table has been transparent regarding its role in the wording and moved in yesterday's second session to make this even more explicit by having not only a representative of the facilitation team present its proposed way forward, but then having the business table chair present suggested wording. So with that reasoning, I again rule that the practice is in order. At this point, I'm going to turn to uh, the, um, the business table uh, for guidance on what's going to be happening next, please. Hi, y'all. It's great to see you again. And thank you uh, for your continued patience as we work together and figure out the best way we can do our work together as the body gathered in the ways that we are gathered. We have heard your concerns over whether we will have time to get through all of the business that is before us. I still firmly believe we have plenty of time. As I mentioned yesterday, I thought we could easily get through all of our business in our first two days. We haven't, but we still have two days. So I think we still have time. Now I'm an infinitely hopeful person, and some people think I'm foolish, but I still believe we can do so. It is, however, up to the council to be willing to continue to move things along. And again, a reminder that items of business we do not get to are referred to the general council executive, and all the discussion notes have already been sent there. Uh, so it is not like the work that you have done will not be taken into account. We've also had requests, uh, continued requests, and I will continue to share, as I did yesterday, the order that we are looking, um, planning on look at the business before us. So for the foreseeable future, here is what we are looking at. Way forward 17, followed by 18, 19, 20, until we get to 25. At that point, we will take way forward 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of the order that we're looking at for the next little bit at least. And as we get closer to the end of that list, I will try and make sure that I get up and tell you again where we're looking. We have also been considering the, um, the different ways in we're working and what's working and what's not. And as a council continuing and as a business committee whose job it is to help us do the business, we are continuing to refine the process in hopes that it works well for the council. And so at this point, I'm actually going to invite another member of the business committee to share some of the information. Uh, as a reminder, partially, that it's not just me who's making all these decisions. There's a group of us who work together. Uh, and so I'm actually kind of sick of hearing from me. I'm sure some of you are sick of hearing from me. So I'm going to invite uh, Shannon McCarthy, another member of the business committee, to share uh, our suggestion for uh, how we continue to move through the items before us. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Shannon McCarthy. I'm the Executive Minister for Prairie to Pine, Living Skies, Northern Spirit Regional Councils, and a member of the business table. I'm joining you this morning from the shores of Lake Superior, Robinson Superior Treaty, uh, Robinson Huron Treaty, where I grew up, and uh, I'm happy to be uh, with you this morning. So based on the assumption 
that you as a general counsel want to get as much of the work of this council done in a good way uh, and not have to refer uh, too much to the new general counsel executive. The business table has met and discussed the frustrations that people are feeling with the process and have learned from what has happened. And so we have a new way to move forward. We don't want to get bogged down in wordsmithing the proposals. Uh, we want to focus on the spirit and the intent of the proposals and the wisdom that we received from the discussion groups and from the facilitation team. And so um, with that, we will be bringing motions that more reflect the wording of the facilitation team. Well, we will have that wording on the screen. Unfortunately, the wording of those motions, uh, we don't have time to get those into feed loop because it takes two hours of staff time to get those posted up into feed loop. So they will be on the screen and we will read them as well. Um, if your discussion group didn't get a chance to discuss a particular proposal and you have wisdom or pieces of information that you would like um, to the, the uh, general counsel executive or the general secretary to hear in the way that we're enacting those proposals, you are invited to submit those to the general counsel executive. And the email for that is gce at united-church.ca. And so um, if there's something that you're concerned about and you want it to be there, um, please feel free to do that. Um, if you see something like a spelling mistake or something like we had yesterday with lead lead or trust that when we get the minutes proofed <laughs> by people who do that kind of stuff, they will catch those kinds of spelling errors and, and uh, phrase changes on your behalf. Um, and so we hope that this adjustment, it will be similar to what we did at GC 43. So we will be bringing uh, that forward. There won't be the wording of the proposal before you. It will be the wording of the facilitation team. So if they said, we recommend take no action, the motion or the proposal before you will look, say, take no action. If they say, uh, enact part A, we, the proposal will be an act part A. It won't be all the wording of that proposal. So you will need to have feed loop open so you are under, understanding what proposal is being dealt with uh, through this because that all that minute wording of all those proposals won't be on the screen the way they were before. Um, and we hope that this process will ease your frustration, allow for voices to be heard in a different way, and respect the work you have done over the last six months and facilitate us moving forward uh, in a good way. So thank you for your willingness to uh, work with us on this and to get through the work, the important work of our uh, this council and our church. Thank you, Shannon. And so folks, I hope that is clear. And I think as we present uh, the items before us, that it will make itself even more clear. Um, uh, moderator, I would invite you to uh, pray us in to this next session, uh, if you are so willing. I believe my prayer starts off with, oh God. Um, and funny that that's a prayer that I've prayed at every general council I've been a part of. So friends, let's just take a moment, please. And let's, let's actually just breathe our prayer for a moment. Let's take some deep breaths into ourselves. Let's ground ourselves in God's love in this place. And let's know that over and over and over again, for the past more than 97 years, even before we became a United Church. The Holy Spirit has moved not only with the processes of the church, but in spite of the processes of the church. And let us listen together for the movement of the Spirit in all 
of this. So let's just take a moment to sit and be. And God, may every breath be our prayer in this day together. Amen. So we are now in the next part of our decision session. And I would ask that uh, way forward 17 be brought uh, to the floor. Way Forward 17, uh, NKA01, Theological Education. So I'm going to begin by turning to the facilitation team. Thank you, moderator. There was no clear consensus on a way forward, nor was there a suggestion on what could be done differently. There was expressed concern for access to theological education in French. We suggest that the General Council take no further action on this proposal. Friends, I would like to, oh, sorry. Hmm? Okay, great, just, just checking because I saw you appear all of a sudden and I was worried I was gonna get the process wrong. So friends, I would like to uh, uh, ask that poll number one be brought forward, please. Do you feel that what the facilitation team heard generally reflects a summary of the discussion group? Avez-vous l'impression que le rapport de l'équipe d'animation est une synthèse adéquate des échanges de l'ensemble des groupes de discussion? I would ask that that poll be ended and the results shared. The large portion of the community does believe that. I would go to the next poll question. Do you feel that what the facilitation team heard, Jen, sorry, do you feel that the suggested way forward reflects what was heard? Estimez-vous que les voix à su proposer reflètent adéquatement ce que l'équipe d'animation a entendu? I would invite you to end that poll and share the results. So I would like to check with Alan, please, around process at this point, just making sure that we do this appropriately. Thank you, moderator. So. At this point, depending on whether you feel we wish to move forward and the support is there, um, we can you know, see the wording. Uh, I can read what the proposed action is taken directly from uh, what the facilitation team recommended, and then that will be the wording that is um, to be discussed before the council. Thank you very much. So. Uh, what I saw was about 85% of the council felt that this wording did reflect the conversations. And so I am going to suggest 
that we move and second this proposal with the word, the wording that is here. And these proposals will be moved and seconded by the general secretary and by the chair of planning. And moderator, would you like me to read the wording so that we have it um, clearly stated before us? Yes, please. So the proposal states that, that the 44th General Council, 2002, take no further action on proposal NKA01. And I'd just like to correct, that's actually 2022. Um. <laughs> whatever, whatever it's supposed to say. Just because I can't read, that's not my fault. <laughs> so uh, that is the proposal before us. Is there any discussion on this proposal? Rebecca uh, Whitting. Thank you, moderator. Rebecca Whiting, Antler River Watershed. Um, the facilitation notes indicate that there's no consensus uh, for Way Forward 17 or Way Forward 18, both concerning theological education. Um, and my concern is that both these proposals um, address theological education and they're being um, directed not to go forward. And of the groups that spoke to these, uh, which is around 13, uh, there seems to be clear concern for theological education with several groups uh, indicating perhaps a broader assessment of theological education should be uh, undertaken. And so there is continued concern for these issues, especially around accessibility and education in French. Um, and I accept that the uh, process that we have agreed upon in the facilitation team uh, has a number of responses that may not uh, uphold this fully, um, and I respect that. However, it is my encouragement that even if this is not undertaken with this general council, that we should continue to pay attention to theological education so we can both support our schools and our candidates for ministry. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, uh, Kofi, Reverend Kofi. Allô? Oui. Mm. Oui, justement, il y a un petit décalage parce que Kofi avait utilisé mon... Moi, c'est Kamta. Oh, c'est mon, mon propre nom. Oui. OK, merci. C'est Isaac Kamta. <rire> oui, merci. Bon, euh, J'ai une préoccupation. Euh, quand on lit, on se rend compte qu'on pense que c'est un problème uniquement francophone. Non, le problème de l'éducation théologique tel que présenté et tel que nous la comprenions, regarde l'ensemble de la formation théologique de l'Église unie face aux nouveaux défis. Parce que on se rend compte que si on ne s'adapte pas on ne, et, on, et, 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 et on ne prend pas la précaution d'anticiper, nous risquons d'être dépassés. C'est vrai, je, 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 je suis francophone, j'appartiens à... Shining Water Region, mais j'appartiens aussi à la commission théologie. Donc, c'est un peu que je voudrais attirer l'attention que non, que ce n'est pas un problème spécifiquement de, de formation théologique francophone, mais de l'ensemble de la formation théologique de l'Église unie du Canada. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Uh, Morgan Pierre Pan. Oui, bonjour. Euh, je suis membre de la région Nagonaka qui a fait cette proposition. Je suis aussi euh, étudiant en théologie à Montréal, à, euh, au Séminaire uni. Euh, je suis vraiment étonné euh, que dans cette proposition, il soit dit qu'il euh, n'y a aucune suggestion claire qui a été faite sur la manière de faire différemment. Parce que je crois que ce n'était pas l'enjeu de la proposition L'enjeu de la proposition était de pouvoir 
faire des, des états généraux ou en tout cas de pouvoir lancer une réflexion sur comment on pourrait faire différemment pour l'avenir, mais ce n'était pas nécessairement à nous de nous prononcer sur ce qui pourrait être fait différemment. Je crois moi aussi que ce n'est pas seulement une question francophone, sachant euh, de toute manière qu'à Montréal, la formation est faite à 90% en anglais, euh, mais c'est aussi pour réfléchir à euh, la viabilité de nos écoles théologiques et aussi la, le contenu de la formation. On, on parle très souvent de nouveaux ministères, euh, de ministères innovants, et je ne connais pas les autres, les autres collèges théologiques, mais je pense que ça demande aussi d'adapter nos formations à l'avenir et aux réalités de l'avenir. Et même si ça ne se fait pas dans le cadre de cette proposition, je crois profondément que nous devons avoir une réflexion sur, sur tout ça si on veut pouvoir faire des, des ministères innovants, et, 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 etc. Voilà, donc merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Uh... So just one quick reminder before I go to the next person in the speaking list, speakers list, is uh, that uh, uh, all of the notes will be going to the general counsel executive and uh, general secretary for work that's being done under the strategic plan. So just so we also know that. Uh, Heather Sandilands. Thank you, moderator. I uh, Heather Sandilands, Prairie to Pine. Uh, regional council, and not coincidentally a diaconal minister. I want to speak to this motion because um, we are aware that theological funding to our, the funding to our theological education institutions has been cut dramatically over the past two decades, and my guess is before that as well. We can no longer afford to financially support seven institutions. There's one institution for the formation for diaconal ministry, There's one that offers uh, students who are francophone access to education. There's one for indigenous students and formation in ministry among indigenous communities. And I think if we are working towards being an intercultural church, we need to uphold those educational uh, formation places that are dealing particularly with those people who find themselves on the margins of our denomination, which is still primarily a white English speaking church. My concern if we are to take no action on this proposal is that the institutions, and in this case, particularly those who for Francophone students will end up floundering financially. And I think that we need to have the study and I think we need to have the report and I think the time has come, has come if it isn't already passed, that we uh, do that work so that we can take the appropriate action. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Christine Marie Gladou. Bonjour à tous. Alors, je vais m'exprimer en anglais parce que c'est plus simple d'être compris, comprise par une très vaste majorité. On September 7th, 1969, the Trudeau government made it a law that the uh, uh, public servants of Canada would be bi officially bilingual. And our country has moved forward ever since. And we see how long it takes to do that kind of work. But as a, a Montreal minister from Nagonaga, I wish to remind people from all over Canada that we receive immigrants either from Syria from Vietnam, from Egypt, from Algeria, um, from Palestine, Christian people from Palestine, from France and from Africa, who all have French for a second language since their first language is either Arabic or, uh, or um, um, a, an African dialect, for instance. So, It is very important that we do not cut off our global church from all these people arriving from all over the world. And the government of Quebec being what it is, has it that they want to promote French in every level of their government. 
So it's very important that we are able to help these people access theological schools that will allow them to grow our church and make it live throughout the, uh, the century, actually. So uh, thank you for listening to me. Ce que je voulais dire pour ceux qui parlent uniquement français, c'est que nous avons la possibilité d'avoir avec nous des gens qui viennent de tous les pays du monde, que ce soit d'Arabie, de Palestine chrétienne, euh, du Vietnam, d'Égypte, de France, d'Afrique, et puis nos frères et sœurs syriens et algériens qui sont chrétiens et francophones ont absolument besoin d'une éducation théologique en français si nous voulons que notre Église survive à travers les décennies qui viennent. Alors, euh, vous le savez aussi, ceux qui parlent français entre vous, euh, entre nous, des, on vit au Québec, puis au Québec, présentement, avec le gouvernement que nous avons, on voit qu'il y a des démarches qui sont prises pour fortifier la langue française et assurer sa pérennité. Je ne vais pas discuter ici des façons dont ils s'y prennent pour le faire, mais c'est très important que nous continuions de faire la promotion du français comme langue d'entrée dans notre Église. Et euh, j'ai juste besoin de vous rappeler que c'était déjà en 1969 que Pierre-Yves Trudeau avait fait de la langue française la deuxième langue officielle du Canada en ce qui concernait le travail de la fonction publique. I thank you all and may God bless you. Thank you. Merci. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to close the speakers list with Kathy Hamilton and I just am going to ask people to keep their comments and, and this is this is not a comment, Christine, on you, um, but we need to keep our comments as, as short as we can, just so we can continue to work through a number of the things. So, uh, Kathy Hamilton, please. Kathy Hamilton, Conseil Regional Naganhaga Regional Council. I'm a bit confused about what will happen. If we support this motion to take no further action, does that mean we do nothing? If we defeat a motion to take no further action, does that mean we take action? I'm just, uh, there seems to be an express need for um, looking at and um, creating a better theological, uh, better uh, sized and better um, uh, focused theological education. And that's what I'm hearing from the conversation. And I don't know how to vote in order to have that happen. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, I'm going to turn to the general secretary, please, uh, to so we understand what happens with the vote on on this. Either one of you would be great. Sorry, <laughs> moderator. Um, the the commitment that's made that we've already decided is that the notes from the discussion groups uh, would go to the. Um, General Counsel Executive, the General Secretary, and, and the various committees, particularly in support of the strategic plan, which has named um, both leadership and um, broadening the invitation, the welcome. And so these notes will help to facilitate some of the, some of the conversation. So um, the concerns that have been raised around theological education uh, in French would then inform some of that conversation because one of the things we're committed to is not just um, responding to the proposals alone, but to listen to the conversations uh, in the council that will help to shape the work. Thank you. And just moderator, if I may, to add the clarity on that, if you vote no to take no further action, and as the general secretary indicated, action has and can, will continue in some ways with the notes to be taken. If you vote to take no further action, then this proposal has been dealt with by taking no further action. If it is defeated, then the proposal still exists and the business committee will deter determine, suggest a way for the council to deal with that piece of business that would still be before the council. So if people vote yes, to this motion, then no further action will be taken on proposal NKA01. Correct, in if the people, way that it's worked. If, in, 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 right. If people vote no, then the business committee would need to bring it back in some way to for the work of the council. Thank you. So friends, 
at this point in time, we are going to move to a vote on this. And so you're going to need to go to feed loop. Um, to the voting button, click the voting button. And uh, I would ask that uh, way forward 17 ballot be opened. If it's not present when you get there, please click the uh, refresh button and this will be open for one minute. After you have voted, please click continue. If your vote is the way you want it to be, click continue again and it will be submitted. If it's not the way you want it to be, click change, make your change, click continue and continue and it will be submitted. The ballot will be open for another 35 seconds. The proposal carries. I would ask please that the next proposal 18 be brought forward. Way forward 18, NEW 01, Diagonal Educational Pathways for the Future. I turn to the facilitation team, please. There was no consensus across discussion groups, though there was some support for the proposal. Some groups explicitly asked to take no action, with one group recommending no action specifically because the program at CCS is already under review. Some groups suggested opening up accessibility across all streams of theological education. We suggest the General Council take no further action on this proposal. So I would ask please that the first poll be brought up. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, so the poll is there. Do you feel that what the facilitation team heard generally reflects a summary of all the discussion groups? Thank you. Can that be poll be shared, please? So there was a, a sense that yes, they did. Could we have poll number two up, please? Do you feel the suggested way forward reflects what was heard? Please uh, end and share the poll. So there is a sense of the large part of the community that the suggested way forward does reflect what was heard. And therefore, we're going to uh, move to the wording. And we please go to the uh, business table. Thank you, moderator. The suggested, lower the wording that we suggest to go before the council that the 44th General Council take no further action on proposal NEW01. With what was in the polls, I'm going to ask that this be moved and seconded, please. Okay. 
And before we open the speakers list, I am going to remind the council that we did agree that, that 90 seconds would be the kind of limit for the time. And so I would ask please that we really work uh, to keep our comments uh, um, as concise, as clear, be, if, if we have comments to make, because we want to make sure that we're saying what needs to be said, but we also wanna make sure that we give time for, for everyone who would like to be able to participate. Is there anyone who wishes to, who, who feels that they need to, to speak to this? Seeing no one come to the speakers list, we will move to the ballot. Please go to voting. And could we have the ballot uh, opened? If you don't see it in front of you when you get there, please click refresh. If you are in favor of what's before you, please click yes. If you are, uh, sorry, if you're in favor that the 44th General Council take no further action on proposal NEW01, please click yes. If you are opposed, please click no, then continue and either confirm or not. The ballot will be open for another minute. The proposal is carried. Could we please move to way forward 19? So moderator, as we are <laughs> switching our theme, um, oh, we will take a moment to pray ourselves into the next section of business before us. Okay, thank you very much. Merci, Dieu, créateur de tout, au Christ, guérisseur de corps communautaire, au esprit guide dans notre discernement. C'est un temps qui glisse, ton église, que nous nous réunissons dans le culte collectif et l'être communautaire depuis des siècles et des millénaires même. As the world accelerates around us, the needs of efficiency and accountability overtake our simple message of gospel love and our corporate being feels more corporate than being. Jargon of 360 full circle reviews and SMART goals point to the manner that we seek to standardize systems in the wake of changing governance and organizational structure where the church is seen as employers and managers of staff, including ministry personnel, as it shepherds candidates through a system of inquiry and discernment, our people feel we are exhausting rather than invigorating leadership. Tu nous demeure de célébrer le sabbat, quand nous nous occupons et au renouveau, Fais que notre travail est un qui se sentant démuni, comme le courage d'un système soumis à des décisions sans rapport, déconnecté au sein du corps d'Église. Méfiant, distrusting, 
help us move from regarding humans as resources. Is not your work for the church to resource humans for the joys and challenges of living faith? May it be so. Amen. Thank you, Graham. Let's uh, bring forward uh, way forward proposal 19 now, please. Thank you, moderator. Way forward 19 is ARW01 and SW03, Senior GCO and Regional Staff Reviews. There was no support to move forward with these proposals with most groups either not coming to consensus or recommending to take no action. Comments were that the pr proposal seemed reactive and unnecessary, that there was a lack of clarity about what the proposals change, and one group raised concerns of cost. We suggest that the General Council take no further action on these two proposals. Thank you, Em. Could I please have the first pro poll? So, do you feel that what the facilitation team heard generally reflects a summary of all the discussion groups? Thank you, you can end that poll and share it please. There is a sense for the community that it did. Could poll number two please be come up? Do you feel the suggested way forward reflects what was heard? You can end that poll and share it. Thank you. With the uh, large portion of the community feeling that uh, this is, uh, we, we're going to move on to the wording. Thank you, moderator. The wording suggested by the facilitation team is to take no further action on these two proposals. And so we have the slight change being naming the two proposals uh, to take no further action on. And that is moved by the general secretary and seconded by uh, the chair of the planning committee. Is there anyone who wishes who feels the need to speak to this. Murray Spear. Uh, thank you, moderator. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm fully in favor of the motion and I'm, I have to admit I'm troubled in spirit that uh, I understand the I understand the, the parliamentary considerations. However, to me, there are there are also deeper considerations that we're using the same wording in the motion for these proposals, for which the facilitation team found found a lack of support, um, uh, and it's the same wording as the previous proposals for which the facilitation team found, um, found a, a great deal of empathy, uh, uh, but no desire for action. Um, and and, um, and so, so I, I, I hope the court can understand what I mean when I say I'm, I'm troubled in spirit that, that, um, that I'm, I'm about to vote on the same wording for a proposal that I, am, uh, that I am opposed to compared to a proposal for which I have um, for which I, I, I affirm, I, I greatly affirm the spirit of the previous proposals, 
um, uh, without desiring any action. And so I'm I'm wondering. I, I suspect this is not entirely in order, but I'm wondering if if there might be an opportunity for some of these motions going forward to say instead of no further action, to say not this one in particular, but but others to say that we affirm the spirit of the proposal, but but provide no specific instructions for the ongoing work or something like that. Um, so that we aren't making the same motion for proposals that had no support and for proposals that had a great deal of, of empathy and, and, and a certain amount of support. Um, so, so I'm in favor of this motion, but, but I, I wanted to share my, my, um, uh, my spiritual struggle with the group. Thank you, Murray. And I'll ask that, that the, the uh, facilitation, sorry, that the business table take that into consideration. It may take us a bit of time to reflect on how we can best respond to that. Uh, Jane Van Patten. I'm Jane Van Patter. Oh, pronouns, sorry, that's okay. Uh, pronouns she, her, L. And I am the president of the Antler River Watershed Regional Council located in southwestern Ontario. I intend to speak one time, thank me now or thank me later, and have my voice heard five times with respect to the way forward 19, 20, 21, 22, and 26 related to the five proposals associated with ARW, Antler River Watershed. To give context, I need to take us back to the learning session number four on March the 30th, 2022. At that time, we saw and heard someone from another region with the same or similar proposals from their region speaking for the ARW as well. We also saw videos by two people presenting the exact same statement pertaining to the proposals. As such, ARW's own <laughs> unique and authentic voice hey, was not in? fairly represented yeah. or covering? heard. Oops. At the time, I raised this concern as being an impediment to the process. From my perspective, not all equity aspirations were realized during learning session four related to the ARW proposals. The experience was frustrating and disappointing. And in the days following, I shared my concerns with the general secretary. More recently, I have reviewed the notes from the GC44 discussion groups as they relate to the ARW proposals. Jane. I see that some groups did not discuss or give high priority to the ARW proposals. And while some groups did affirm one of the proposals, there was insufficient feedback overall. I appreciate Jane. the collective wisdom of my siblings and faith across the country. The wider church has led the GC44 facilitation scene to discern the way forward for 19, 20, 21, 22, and 26 is to take no further action and I agree. Thank you, moderator, for the opportunity to give voice to the way forward recommendations pertaining to the ARW proposals. I feel that the equity aspirations Jane. not Jane. met during session four have been realized today. Thank you, Jane. Seeing no one else on the speakers list, we are going to move to the vote. I would ask you go <clears throat> to go to feed loop, please. And uh, when you get there to click on voting in the menu bar, could the ballot please be opened? If the ballot isn't there, please click refresh. If you are in favor of the proposal that is on screen, please click yes, that the 44th General Council 2022 take no further action on proposals ARW01 and SW03. If you are opposed to that, please click no, then click continue. Um, and uh, click, I believe it's continue again if your ballot is ready, or you can change it and submit your ballot.
The voting will be open for another 45 seconds. Sorry, 10 seconds at this point. Please close the ballot. That proposal carries. I believe we're going to have a moment for for uh, uh, testimony and then we'll continue on with our um, our way forward proposals I'm I apologize I thought that was too. Um, okay, hold on, folks. Uh, we'll do another one first, and then we'll go to that. My apologies. Uh, number 20. We're going to go to way forward 20. Way forward 20, ARW02, vocational review and discipline accountability. Turn to the facilitation team. Was generally no support for this proposal. We heard comments expressed that the proposal is coming from a place of distrust and it seeks to create an oversight body of an oversight body. We heard affirmation for the need to self-monitor the church and also a need to balance transparency with confidentiality. We suggest that the general counsel take no further action on the proposal. Could I please have poll number one brought up? Avez-vous l'impression que le rapport de l'équipe d'animation est une synthèse adéquate des échanges de l'ensemble des groupes de discussion? You can close this uh, uh, poll. Uh, the large portion of the community feels that it does. Can we move to poll number two, please? Do you feel the suggested way forward reflects what was heard? You can close and share that poll. The community generally feels that it has. So we're going to move to the wording, please. Thank you, moderator. And I will take this opportunity as well to state formally that we have noted the um, potential desire for differentiation in wording. And while we cannot adapt to that instantaneously, um, we'll try and figure something out between sessions and what might make sense there. This uh, wording suggested from the facilitation team is to take no further action on the proposal, and thus what we are suggesting is that the 44th General Council 2022 take no further action on proposal ARW02. Thank you very much, Alan. It's moved by the General Secretary and seconded by the Chair of Planning. Is there anyone who feels that they must speak to this proposal.
Seeing no one come to the speaker's list. Seeing no one come to the speaker's list, we will open the ballot for voting. So please open the ballot for voting. And I know you're getting tired of hearing me say this, but please go to feed loop, go to voting in the menu bar. If you are in favor of the proposal that the 44th General Council 2022 take no further action on proposal ARW, uh, please vote yes. If you are opposed, please vote no. Then click continue. And uh, after you've done that, you are you you can then confirm your ballot or go back and change it. Once you've confirmed it, it will be sent in. The ballot will be open for another 30 seconds. carries. Let's take a moment for testimony before we move to our next way forward proposal. Jésus-Christ est le ressuscité qui ressuscite. Il est mon sauveur parce qu'il m'a ressuscité et m'a donné une vie complètement nouvelle. Voilà pourquoi il est ma source d'espérance en toutes circonstances. Let's continue with way forward. Oh. What who Jesus isn't for sure is any idea that is really comfortable, that lets me be who I want to be and do what I want to do and care about what I want to care about. The Jesus I believe in right now is drawing me towards abundant life asking me to trust God way more than I am 100% comfortable trusting anyone other than myself and calling me to find resurrection always by letting go. And at the same time, the Jesus I believe in who is calling me to do all of these really hard things believes in me too, even if I can't do them, even if I don't do them 100%. Jesus believes that I can do these things through the same power and grace of God that gives me the will to follow, and therefore the will and the power maybe even to do more than I could ask or imagine. Thank you. Let's continue with Way Forward uh, 21, I believe. Way Forward 21, ARW03 and SW04 Vocational Process Accountability. I'll turn to the facilitation team. Moderator, there was generally no support for these proposals. Some groups suggested further work was needed and or that there was too much problematic in the proposals. We suggest the General Council take no further action on these two proposals. Could I please have poll one open, please? Do you feel that what the facilitation team heard generally reflects a summary of all the discussion groups? Uh, 
I would invite you to end the poll and share the results. The community does generally feel that that's so. Poll number two, please. Do you feel the suggested way forward reflects what was heard? You can end that poll and share it. Thank you. The community generally feels that that is so. Sorry, the large part of the community feels that that is so. So we're going to move to the wording. As a moderator, the suggestion from the facilitation team put into wording is that the 44th General Council 2022 take no further action on proposals ARW03 and SW04. Thank you. With what was on the screen in the polls, I would ask that this be moved and seconded. Is there anyone who feels that they uh, need to speak to this proposal? Not seeing anyone on the speakers list. We'll go to the ballot. Could the ballot please be opened? And again, please go to voting. If the ballot is not there, please click refresh when it opens up. If you are in favor that the 44th General Council 2022 take no further action on proposals ARW03 and SW04, then click yes. If you are opposed, please click no, then click continue. And if you're prepared to confirm your ballot, please click confirm and your ballot will be sent in. The voting will be open for 30 more seconds. passes. Could we go to uh, way forward 22, please? Way forward 22, ARW04, a jurisdiction of clergy. I'll turn to the facilitation team. Thank you, moderator. There was no clear consensus to affirm this proposal. Based on the conversations reported, we see the way forward may be for the regions to implement the system of networks and clusters that were affirmed at GC 43. We suggest the General Council take no further action. Could poll one be opened, please? Do you feel that what the facilitation team heard generally reflects a summary of all the discussion groups? You can end the poll and share the results, please. Uh, a large, the large part of the community feels that way. Can we move to poll number two? Do you feel the suggested way forward reflects what was heard? You can close the poll and share the results.
thank you. Again, a large part of the community feels that uh, it does reflect what was heard. So we'll go to the wording. Thank you, moderator. Well, the facilitation team uh, does suggest that the way forward may be to have the regional councils uh, implement networks and clusters. Directing regional councils to do something is not within the purview of the general council, though the hope is that by passing the notes on that that information goes and we are all, you are all, we are all part of regional councils um, and able to uh, encourage that work to be done there as well. So based on the suggestion uh, at the end of the facilitations team report, the wording put before you is that the 44th General Council 2022 take no further action on proposal ARW04. Wait, that's the wrong one, isn't it? Or am I bad? Can you please go back up? Oh, no. no. That's correct. That's okay, correct. my bad. Sorry. I just got Thanks. myself really confused. That's okay. So, uh, um, with what we saw in the polls, I would ask that this be moved and seconded, please. And if there is anyone who feels that they need to speak to this proposal, I would ask you to uh, come to the speakers list. I don't see anyone moving to the speakers list. So we will again move to the ballot, please. I would ask that the ballot be open. Please go to voting. If you are in agreement that the 44th General Council 2022 take no further action on proposal ARW04, please click yes. If you are opposed, please click no. Then please click continue. If you are ready for your ballot to be sent in, click confirm. If not, return to your ballot. And when you're ready, click confirm. The ballot will be open for another 30 seconds. This proposal carries. Let's continue with uh, Way Forward 23. Way Forward 23, GCE01 financial support for ministry personnel suspended while in a directed program. I'll go to the facilitation team. Thank you, moderator. We heard no consensus on a way forward. There were comments that reflected that not everyone has an understanding of the process related to directed programs. We suggest that the General Council take no further action. Could I ask that poll number one please be open? Do you feel that what the facilitation team heard <coughs> excuse me, generally reflects a summary of all the discussion groups? You can end the poll and share the results. Could we open the uh, uh, next poll, please? Do you feel the suggested way forward reflects what was heard? I'd invite you to close the poll and uh, share the results. Could 
with that understanding, I would bring the, I would ask that the, the business table bring the wording forward. Thank you, moderator. The wording we would like to put before the council is that the 44th General Council 2022 take no further action on proposal GCE01. Uh, recognizing that about 15% of the responses uh, had some concerns about this, I think we need to recognize that there may be discussion on this. So I'm going to ask that it be moved and seconded, please. Is there anyone who feels that uh, they need to speak to this proposal? I'd invite you to go to the speakers list. Kathy Hamilton. Moderator, uh, Kathy Hamilton, Conseil Regional Naganhaga. I read general support for this. I didn't read, uh, I read some questions, but I read general support for this. Um, and so I don't understand how we end up with no further action when many of the of the groups supported it um, and and many said go ahead go forward with it as it is thank you kathy i'm going to actually check with the facilitation team around that uh, and while the facilitation team is preparing i'm going to go to sandra thompson's Sandra. Thank you. Um, my my comment is is not perhaps as as relevant as the one that was just made, but I do have some concern that there would be a recommendation for no further action based on the fact that there were some comments that suggested there was misunderstanding or no understanding of a proposal. Um, uh, without a bit more data <laughs> about how many comments suggested misunderstanding, I, I, um, I worry that that is not actually a very good reason for not taking further action on any proposal. Thank you. Thank you. I'm wondering if the facilitation team uh, has any additional information for us. Thank you, moderator. Uh, I understand that Hewitt and Carmen are both um, in the Zoom room as well. So Hewitt has his hand raised, so I'll defer to Hewitt. Thank you, Em. Hewitt Holmes. Hewitt Holmes, Shining Waters Regional Council Facilitation Team. Thank you very much, moderator. And I'm uh, very much appreciative that uh, there are others who are continuing to read the group work. Uh, we are grateful for, for uh, that you know, being done. I just had a peek at my notes, moderator, and my notes is not consistent with the previous speaker's comments about general cons uh, uh, way forward. Uh, while there were support in the five groups that I had, there were a number of groups that decided not to uh, uh, take any uh, action on this. And I had groups ranging from group seven through to group uh, nine or 10. And so I would uh, uh, say that the recommendation by the facilitation team is consistent with the way that we read through all the proposals. Thank you very much. Uh, Peter uh, Kudelka. Can I be heard? Yes, you can. Uh, if I go back to when we were discussing it, the thing that bothered me was uh, I really uh, could not understand. Uh, I needed more uh, definition of what a directed program was. And without some more knowledge at that end, uh, I was certainly not going to uh, pass it as it stood. Thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. 
not seeing anyone else coming to the, okay. Uh, Arliss, uh, uh, Arliss uh, Skibot. Thank you, moderator. Can you hear me? I can hear you. If Thank you're you. able to turn on your camera, could you do that for us, please? Yes. Thank you. Um, um, I would also wonder if there's anyone from the Office of Vocation who is, is um, resourced to us today who could talk about a directed program. I have arm's length or participation in working in a in a directed program for someone and the situation is that if they if the person is working hard for education and um, emotional intelligence work they may or may not be in a pastoral charge and um, and uh, then you know how do we take care of them in in that time um, and I I don't have the proposal in front of me, but I think that in the discussion group in which I was, um, we did have a fulsome discussion on how this would be helpful. So, um, so that that would be my request that we access a, a general counsel staff resource if um, um, I if have the general. The, the general secretary is in the process of, of, of messaging me at the moment. So we'll see what we can do for you there. Okay, I, I think that that would help because if you have not been part of one or served on a support committee for in the Office of Vocation, um, you wouldn't know necessarily what this is about. And I can understand the reticence then to, you know, to um, take action. Thank you. Carmen Lansdowne. Thanks, moderator. Um, I will add uh, a comment here, a general comment that we discussed in the facilitation team, and I can't remember if we communicated it anywhere uh, in writing or on video, um, but one concern we had was there were a number of proposals like this one where there was a high degree of understanding of the manual or of different processes and procedures and policies within the church. And um, the, even within our group of folks who have served on general counsel executive or have been very involved in governance in the church um, that had uh, sort of limited or just living into understanding of some of the ways in which um, our church structures have changed. and we actually had um, a real concern, not just with this proposal, which I think Arliss spoke very well to the technicalities of this issue, um, but to the ways in which commissioners uh, were in the conversations reflected um, a lack of understanding or um, a, a real diversity of understanding in uh, what already exists or what decisions have already been made or how things are intended to work. And I, and, um, I think that that's understandable given we're you know, four years into living into a new structure of the church where we've been very limited around how we meet. But um, I think that that also speaks to these proposals where we couldn't suggest a way forward was because there was such a diversity of understanding and a, and a huge lack of understanding too in the, in, in the perspectives that were raised. And, and one of the things I would like to name at the moment is I feel uh, when folks are speaking in support of proposals where we've suggested no way forward, it's because they may know that issue very well. Um, what we need to do is find a way to bring everybody alongside because it may be that those things are very important and need to be worked at. And my intuition is that some of them will surface again uh, over the coming years in general counsel executive. And so I'm grateful I've had a chance to be part of facilitation team, but I feel like that context is maybe helpful. And so I just wanted to offer that to the court. Thank you, Carmen. Murray Spear. 
Thank you, moderator. Um, so I, I can speak about my my discussion group experience, which was that um, when I look back at the report from our discussion group, it mentions that there were strong concerns uh, from one member of the group, and no disrespect to that member, I valued her participation very, 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 very much. Um, but her strong concerns were based in in a complete lack of understanding of um, of the proposal and of the status quo that it was uh, is trying to change. Um, and uh, uh, and so so my my consideration is that um, if there were strong concerns expressed throughout the discussion groups, that they may also be founded in a in a in a lack of um, of understanding. Um, and so I'm wondering if there is an option to um, uh, to refer this proposal to the next annual meeting of the general council rather than rather than taking no action saying definitively that we take no action that we acknowledge that we have a lack of understanding and we agree to take it up um, um, again uh, as general council 44 at, at our next annual meeting I don't know if that is a possible way forward but I think it's appropriate for this this very technical issue which all and all it's doing all it's doing is saying that appropriate groups within the Office of Vocation can decide whether to extend um, income support uh, when it's appropriate. Um, so, so I'm, I, I put that forward as a possibility. Um, don't for our don't disappear. Don't disappear. So, uh, Murray, because it's been moved and seconded, if you wish to um, uh, uh, refer this to the. Um, next meeting of the of the sorry the, the meeting you suggested you can do that um i would move i would move that amendment moderator that uh the 44th general council 2022 um whatever the parliamentary wording is table or defer this proposal um to our next annual meeting thank you um can i ask all the hands be put down please can I ask for a seconder for that, please? It's seconded by uh, Sam uh, Grotenberg. So this is a motion to refer this to the next annual meeting of General Council 44. And I'm assuming, Murray, that this is uh, with the hope that the General Secretary would ensure that there is information for the Council to be able to make a decision. Uh, Correct, thank so, you. Thank you. Um, so we're in a, a referral. So the only the only discussion is about the wisdom to referring this to the next annual meeting of GC44. Paul Douglas Wolf. Yes, moderator. I would ask that um, a friendly amendment that what you just said of materials for education or to inform be also part of the amendment that the general secretary, the councillor asked the general secretary to send out information, further information, and that it be referred for consideration. As it stands right now, the problem is that we don't understand or we don't have enough information. Just deferring it is not helping. We must have in the amendment that further information will be given, not just an understanding, but specifically stated. I don't know the wording, but I would offer that as a friendly amendment. So because we're into amendments, uh, this makes it a little bit difficult. Um, I would like, I, what I heard you say, Paul, is that you're not prepared to accept that the, the general secretary would recognize from this discussion that, the, that, that there needs to be education um, around this before it comes together. Did I get that correct? I'm saying, moderator, that the specific problem was that of not having enough information. If that is the problem, then it should be in the amendment, not simply an understanding that the general secretary will, will pick that up. The problem we identified here is that there's need for further information. We are deferring it because we need further information. Then let us say that. Thank you. Um, I'm going to say that that's actually off topic around the wisdom to refer. And so we're going to stay with this amendment. Um, if there is anything else about the wisdom to refer, I would like to hear it. So 
So could we please have a ballot on the amendment? Uh, let's hold it, please. Hold it, John Watson. Moderator, I think um, what Brother Paul was trying to do was refer with direction. And, and, uh, and I think that would be in order. So I'm not going to get into procedural uh, debates at the moment. Uh, it is recognized that the, the whole reason for referring this is for direction for the council. So I'm going to ask please that the general secretary be very clear that we understand that information is needed so a decision can be made. General secretary, is it possible for you to let us know that you understand this? Moderator, I, I do clearly understand. Thank you. I would like to ask please that the ballot be brought forward on the amendment. This ballot is going to be open for 30 seconds. And you get to it by going to voting. Okay, I'm actually not gonna go through that right now because I've, I've lost one of my computers that I have to figure out how to get to the voting. So, uh, yeah. So, we are only looking at the amendment here. If you would like this to be, sorry, a motion to refer. If you would like this to be referred to the next annual meeting of uh, General Counsel 44, please click yes. If you do not wish it to be referred to the next annual meeting, please click no. The ballot can be closed. The proposal is referred to the, the next annual meeting. Thank you. Uh, friends, we're going to, uh, we, we're approximately, um, oh, we're at time. And so we're gonna take a moment for a testimony and song and break, and then we will see you uh, uh, at the appropriate time to come back to our meeting. Wanted to put what I say in context. Uh, just heard yesterday that uh, more unmarked graves have been uh, located by a residential school, which affects my spirit. Also this morning, I learned that uh, Canada is attempting to open its doors to uh, Ukrainian refugees. So talking about who Jesus is, uh, I think always comes in context always about what we are experiencing and trying to live through. Um, so the first question was, who is Jesus to me? Uh, for those of you who I haven't met, I'm, I'm Stan McKay, and I'm living in my home village in Fisher River, First Nation. Um, and I have known through most of my life that uh, even as a child, that Jesus was the great mystery that uh, it was about the spirit. And in that way, I think it is beyond words to really uh, express. We only know in part, and that's biblical. Uh, but I have learned that the word made flesh is what Jesus is for us. And so the love of God is incarnated love of God incarnate. In Cree, uh, Jesus is brother. He is storyteller. And I can remember, uh, I believe back in the 60s that the Division of Mission in Canada uh, sent out four line drawings depicting Jesus. I don't remember them all, but I recall very clearly laughing Jesus, which was very, very significant new image 
in my limited understanding. And then there was one that has lived with me through the rest of my life. And that was Jesus as liberator. Jesus would set us free. So I'm grateful for those images, those portrayals. They were for me very radical. And uh, I think it was in a time of what is called a new curriculum in the United Church when there was some revision happening in Christian education. So this healer, this brother, this liberator is part of what I continue to work at in my life to understand what that might mean for me as an indigenous person. And as I look at our colonial history uh, in the uh, in government and in the country, in the church, um, those images are powerful. How have I known Jesus? Hmm. I started out as a young child, baptized in a Methodist mission here in Fisher River, a church that is very much out of Methodist heritage and uh, in many ways is still living out part of that, those teachings. So Jesus in our church hall was a picture of a fairly Anglo-Saxon creature on the wall. And uh, that was uh, sort of what I lived with basically. I, my time in residential school, Presbyterian residential school, five years, um, I, I never had any reason to, to question or any support to uh, consider Jesus is anything other than um, non-Indigenous. In 1971, I arrived in the church in Norway House. Dorothy and I, with our eldest daughter, traveled to Norway House to be in ministry. I was ordained and educated in a theological school, but I had never ever put that together with my indigenous heritage or how I would ever be a minister in an indigenous community. Well, in 1971, about three months after we'd arrived, I went as I usually did to the afternoon worship at 2 p.m. in Norway House, a church that had begun by the Methodists uh, in 1840, uh, one of the older churches in Western Canada. And I sat in the pew uh, because the elders took the afternoon services in Cree. I did a service in English, but they were doing the Cree service. And I was learning theological Cree, spiritual Cree. I had always taught Cree, but I had never really learned my own spiritual uh, language. And, and so I was learning through all these months. And about the third month I was there, I'm sitting in the church for the afternoon service. And Fred Moore opened this Bible and he read from John's Gospel, chapter 21, verses 15 to 19. And he read the Cree Bible before he spoke. And as I sat there, I heard him say, Simon Okusa John. Simon, son of John, do you love me? Asamik in my chigusa, feed my lambs. And three times he asks, Isagina, do you love me? I remember that because I think it was the first time I realized that my culture and the gospel were connected. So um, three words, the voice of my people, I began now to see it in their lives. I worked with elders in the community and I learned from Florence from James, Nathaniel, Daniel, 
Jesse, Edward, Roderick, John, all these people who carried the on the work of the church in Norway House. And I was there learning, uh, being orientated to their ministry. And I began to see in them the word incarnate, the work of God being carried by these marvelous faithful people who had been colonized and left with certain images, I think, that were very limiting, certainly in terms of, of how the gospel connected to our culture. So my image of Jesus was expanded. My self-recognition as a person related to this Jesus of Nazareth, this family member, uh, has, has been very significant in my, my journey 